Hello, hello, and welcome back to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick. My name is Felicia, and this is the beautiful, lovely... Tawny Ray. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> you are welcome. And tonight we're going to be talking about the movie Good Night, Mommy. So yes. we're really excited to do that. But before we do... So before we do, we'll do some normal housekeeping stuff, um, but we literally, right before we got on to record today, we got the news that Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, the RBG, so that's sad, and I feel like, you know, regardless of your political stance, she was a pioneer and a badass, and I highly recommend the documentary RBG if you haven't seen it, and so mm. that's, it's sad, and, you know, she'll be missed, so Cheers. Yeah. To our RBG. Cheers. Clink. <laughs> what are you drinking over there? All right. So my first, not first ever in my life. It's like I'm not popping my cherry or anything. But my first since like detoxing from alcohol, old fashioned. It's made with Maker's Mark. My husband made it. And it is so good. Oh mm. my gosh. It is so good. Oh, did I say it's an old fashioned? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that make- sounds good. I'm just drinking straight whiskey over here. So. <laughs> You're a baller. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That feels way less cool. Like maybe I should get some some mixer stuff for to actually make drinks. No, yeah. Tawny's thug life all the way. <laughs> thug life. <laughs> thug life. I I do. I was like listening to a different podcast and somebody was talking about drinking whiskey and I was like, man, that's cool. And I was like, oh, am I cool because I drink whiskey? I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could drink beer. I just can't. I love beer so much, but it makes me feel so bad because I have like some sort of gluten allergy thing, intolerance or something. And also I can't drink it on this podcast because it makes me burp. And I don't want to subject anybody to that. Okay. I cut (laughs) them all out or I do my best. So I'm sorry if anybody sneaks any, anybody, I'm sorry if anyone sneaks through because I don't want you to hear that. Um. I, I, in our Instagram, I'm going to put back the little whiskey glass because I love that, that emoticon. It's super cute. <laughs> I do too. Put it in our thing. Um, so let's also talk about um, our October plans. Yes, yes, we yes. we just went live on Instagram, but for our people on, po- on the, who are listening to the podcast and maybe don't follow us on Instagram, let's talk about our October plan. Yes. Uh. It is such a good name that Tawny and her man came up with. So for Yeah, I can't t- take credit for this. This was Jade. Was this it was Jade. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Tawny. What is our celebration in honor of October and all things Halloween? We, we are, are co- going with <laughs> October theme is flick or treat. <laughs> flick or treat! <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, we are excited. We um, literally were just like planning a month ahead of time. We started this conversation on, you know, what we want to do. And of course, with COVID, like what can we do and virtually. So we did announce that the number one thing we're doing is we're doubling up on episodes because like Tawny said, four episodes for the month of October just isn't enough. So we're doubling up. There'll be nine episodes. Um, and it, what we're doing, if you go to either our Facebook group and you could There'd do eight, 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 eight episodes, but one of the episodes that we're going to do is a Halloween head to head. So there's two, we're going to do two in one. Yeah. So nine movies, eight episodes. Yep. We've been planning for a month. <laughs> I'm still getting it wrong. (laughs) Um, But what we're going to do is we have chosen um, some of the movies and then we would like your feedback. And so we'd like you to choose two of the movies that we will feature on our podcast in October. And to do that, you can go to our Instagram and we'll have a post. You'll see it. It'll have a flick or treat. And we have a list of movies that were Halloween inspired movies and um, Halloween season inspired movies. And you can just put like the letter or the name, pick as many as you want. And the top, the top two with the top amount of votes will win. In our Facebook group, it's even easier because we have Two Chicks and a Horror Flick private Facebook group and we have a poll. So we have a flick or treat poll so you can just pick all the ones you like. We also are um, encouraging if you have one that we don't have listed that you think we should watch, 
add it, add it as a recommendation, and then other people can vote on yours as well. Yes, yeah. And it doesn't have to be like Halloween vibe theme, but I don't know. For some reason, I just got it in my head like, oh, I really want to watch like Halloween vibe movies, like stuff that's like around Halloween or on Halloween or has to do with Halloween. Just I'm just fucking ready. I'm I'm like, I'm so ready for that. So it doesn't have to be that. But that's the like, that's the vibe we're going for. And I just subjected yeah. Felicia to that. I was like, this is what I want to do. No, I we're doing loved it. it. I loved it because we were really going back and forth like, what should we do? What can we do? Um, to give you an idea, so we have a we did research. Well, Tawny did. I don't know why I said we. That's totally fraudulent. Tawny did research on what movies are like kind of Halloween vibe. And so that's where our list comes from. The ones we chose, can I tell them? The ones that we're going to yeah. do that we chose already? Okay. The Predator, 2018, Trick or Treat, uh, Scary Movies, sorry, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, 31, Sleepy Hollow, and then the head-to-head -head she mentioned Halloween, the original versus Rob Zombie's Halloween. So those are the ones we chose. And then we have a whole list of uh, other ones to vote from. But then, of course, you could put your own your own cho choices in there, too. Do we have anything else that we need to talk about? I, I think we covered mm -hmm. it. I think we covered October it. plans. Oh, mm -hmm. we are going to do a costume, but we don't know what yet. Probably yeah. at some point. Costume, don't know what yet. Um, and then things as they come. You know, there's some ideas we had that are super cool um, that we may need to wait until next year. You know, um, COVID changes and different things yeah. change. But we were talking about some stuff. But, um, but now, you know, and Tawny, I started this podcast not very long ago. Um, we always thought like, oh, we'll be doing, I, I plan on being an old tattooed lady talking about, <laughs> <laughs> talking about movies with you. Um, but you know, we didn't, I don't think we were like, okay, so October's coming. We just recently did that. So now yeah. after Halloween, um, we have a whole year to plan for October. Totally. <laughs> totally. And I actually pulled up our, our, um, Buzzsprout while we were like, we had a moment where we were down there and recovered, but um, we actually have 418 downloads <laughs> since I'm like, damn, we got over the 400 mark. I just wanted to cheers. Cheers so to that. Happy. Cheers to that. We are taking okay, the world is... by storm. I was so excited. <laughs> I want to say one more thing. Sorry, guys. Um, I was at my day job yesterday. And a part of our team meetings is we have to say one piece of good news, personal and one piece of good news, um, uh, business good news and so my personal good news was about the podcast and when I shared that I had um, some of my team members slacking me oh my god that's so cool to hear about your podcast another one slacked me can you send me the link to your podcast and another one you actually talked to him Chris Reth shout out to Chris Reth he works with oh, me yeah okay, okay yeah and so he joined our Facebook group and then another woman wrote me and she's like hey can I my daughter loves scary movies can I have your podcast and your website and it was just so cool because I mean I don't were know, you like me cuss a lot like yeah. <laughs> were you well, like she's in college no okay. she's in college okay. so <laughs> cool 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 <laughs> yeah so I'm super fun and by the way something we are thinking of doing we just don't have it scheduled yet is we are going to do hopefully Tony's okay with me telling you this we're going to do two chicks and a little chick and we're going to have my daughter TT on the show we're going to talk about Coraline and the the good thing about TT is she has her own YouTube channel and bugs me all the time so she uh she will she totally when the girls came in to see like my setup for the podcast tonight and she came in and she's like hey it's two chicks and a little chick subscribe below and hit the like button and then she walked out so <laughs> oh my god that's cute she's ready <laughs> oh so cute i'm excited all right so we're gonna go into this let's get into it let's let's, let's it. dive in all right, so let's start with the storyline. All right, if you remember, because we've been talking about all kinds of beautiful things, uh, we are talking about Goodnight Mommy. And the storyline is, in the heat of the summer, a lonesome house in the countryside, beaten woods. Oh, countryside, oh, between woods. Okay. <laughs> so, 
I said I haven't drank old fashions in like two months. So <laughs> a hot minute. Yeah, you're <laughs> it's cool. All right. In the heat of the summer, a lonesome house in the countryside between woods and cornfields lives nine year old twin brothers who are waiting for their mother. When she comes home bandaged after cosmetic surgery, nothing is like before. The children start to doubt that this woman is actually their mother. End of story. <laughs> well, yeah, end of synopsis. <laughs> end of or... synopsis. Yeah, so, um, all right. Would you like to tell me? Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 don't tell me because I'm going to tell you who is in it. Mm, they're not. I, 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 I said that mm, like that because I'm nervous about pronouncing their names. The names, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is kind of interesting. Lucas and Elias, the twin brothers, are actually twin brothers named Lucas and Elias Schwartz. So, okay. Um, and then Mother, which here it's called Mutter, 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 Mutter probably, German, is Suzanne West, W W U E S T. So I'm thinking it's West. And those are really the the three. There's other people that kind of make small appearances but those are the three main main movie peeps right there um okay. and 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 the director let me just pull up my notes right here um now this one's gonna be hard director veronica france that wasn't hard and severin viala so i apologize if i said your name wrong um yeah those were the it was, that's who it was directed by two people that's weird yeah it was directed by two people and it was released in 2014. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, spoilers are ahead. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely. Okay. We're going to spoil the heck out of this movie. Yep. And um, what did you want me to go? Do you want me to give you, you wanna... a hot take? Yeah, tell me your hot take. Yeah. Okay. I felt like this was all right. It was... Uh, it, there were some really good moments, and I appreciated those. There's some really good parts, but it was slow. It was fucking slow. I was, I don't know why, I didn't expect it to be, like, fast-paced or anything, but, like, and I don't know if I just was, like, in a mood where I was, like, needing some shit to happen, but I just, I had kind of a hard time through the first, like, 75% of the way through this movie. I kept thinking, like, god damn, like, this is... I just... I, I'm like, okay, but maybe we're headed for an explosive ending. Like, right? Like, Antichrist, I feel like, is very... Um, it's a very slow burn, but, like, boy, does it pay off. Like, you'll never see a movie like that again in your life. And so I was like, yeah. maybe this will be that? Like, but I don't know. Again, I think there were some good things. So I'm, I'm sort of... I'm sort of meh on it. How are you feeling? What's your hot take? Um, so I liked it. Um, probably the the same. But I liked it. I I do. It definitely was slow, um, but I was intrigued. Uh, so maybe I was in a different mood because <laughs> I was really just like, "What is going on?" Like I was, I was definitely mm. waiting in anticipation for that next thing. But there, it definitely was slow. Um, I liked it. I have a, a lot. I'm curious to bounce off you. Like, yeah, I don't feel like it was, I feel like it was explained at the end, but not fully. There's some pieces that I, I didn't, that weren't explained that I, I didn't get. Um, I guess the, the main part, you know, of, okay, spoiler alert, that, that boy is not alive. The twin boy is actually like his ghost uh, or, the, you know, cause his brother died. Um, Did that take you by surprise, by the way? Were you shocked yes. by that? Yes, it was. Okay. I'm curious if you were. No. Okay. I was like, that. that's just another thing about this movie. Immediately, as soon as they're like, I mean, I don't know how long this is in the movie, like maybe 10 minutes or something. But as soon as they're in the kitchen and she pours one glass of whatever juice, I was like, oh, he did. <laughs> like, I just was See? like. See, I was wondering if you, because I didn't. I, and maybe that's why I enjoyed it. I had yes. no idea. I actually rewound it because I'm like, did I miss something? Because it's in a different language, right? So you have to read the yeah. subtitles. And I was like, did I miss something? Why is she so mad at that boy? 
And I did not pick up, none of us did, picked up that that, that he was dead. And okay. I was like, dude, she's so mean to him. And um, so I, at the end of the movie, I did think, I wonder if Tawny just <laughs> knew all of it uh, because I didn't. Yeah, I, I definitely picked up on that. That one thing. I just feel like I got got so fucking hard by like the sixth sense that I will never <laughs> get got like this again. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, no, bitch, I'm I'm on the lookout for like somebody's dead. Like I'm like, you're not tricking me again. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, as soon as he's like, Oh, this you only pour one glass of wine, you don't make breakfast, two breakfasts anymore. And then like there were just time after time that she wasn't paying attention to the other kid or like that she was only talking to him that I was just like, I, yeah, yeah I so thought that, she hated him Yeah, <laughs> for some reason. And it broke my heart. Like when he said, this is from Lucas, this is from Elias, right? Cause it's not Elias. It she said it a different way, but, um, and they were the shells and she only took the one from, yeah. Elias, Elias. I'm just gonna say Elias. I I don't think that that's right, but and not from Lucas. I was like, oh, what? Yeah. Why are you? <laughs> and then when she found the lighter under Lucas's mattress, and got mad at Elias, and I was like, it was under Lucas's mattress. Yeah. Why do you assume it's his? Like I was gullible AF. I just I believe. It. <laughs> and another thing, um, which I thought they did good, in, in my opinion, was okay. Um, while he was torturing the, they were torturing the mom to say, Hey, where's our real mom? They didn't believe she was the real mom. Um, I started to be like, what if she is their real mom? Because if you think about it, she was super stressed. I mean, they made her look like a really mean mom, but in a nutshell, knowing that that boy is, she's probably super frustrated because your brother is dead. Like she doesn't want to play this game anymore. She, yeah. her face And he's is, in denial. Yep. Uh, you know? He's demanding that she talk and she's under so much pressure. Her husband left her or he's gone. We don't really know, but he's gone. Right. Um, she lost her son um, and she had massive surgery on her face and she's taking medication for it. So she's going to be short and snippy. Dude, I have none of that shit going on and I'm short and snippy. So <laughs> I, I mean, I get it, right? Um, so I started to wonder, but one thing made me doubt she was the mom the whole time. It's because when she went into the forest and did the weird fucking thing with her head, that fast thing. Yeah. She got naked and did that fast thing with her head. So I rewound it at the end of the movie because I was like, oh shit, that was their mom. And the way, in my, my opinion, that they merged those scenes, it tricked me. So him and his brother were watching their mom go out into the forest yeah. Then it follows the mom into the forest and she takes off all her clothes and does the weird fast head thing that you see in horror movies a lot. And then at the end of Jacob's it... Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's yep. Ladder effect. Yep. And then at the end of it, the two boys <gasps> wake up like from a nightmare. Oh, oh, I didn't pick up on that. See, oh, okay. I didn't either. I saw it as she did that and then it just fast forwarded to later in the evening when they woke up. Like, I didn't think, and then I thought, oh, shit, maybe they dreamt that that's what was happening in the forest. Shit. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I just kind of, like, tossed that aside. Like, I had How forgotten How could you, though? Because that that's weird shit for a human to do. It is Because weird. the there's whole a thing, I was like, there's no way she is their mom if she did that with her head in the forest. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but you're right. It could have been a, 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 just like the, there's another dream sequence, right? where he cuts open her belly and the thing the yes cockroaches come out yes i was like bro anytime okay you give me a stomach and a box cutter and i'm fucking disgusted like that's my like least favorite that's my that's the worst favorite shit of mine i don't know because it happened in green room right like it's like so gross and then it happened again here and i was like what is it like what is it about the box box cutter with a stomach and i was just like oh no like and then all the cockroaches i was so gross but then i was like oh okay that makes sense that it was a dream and i'm so. glad it was a dream honestly because then at that point i was like what is she yeah like totally. i don't know You're if like, they could have c- continued on with the movie and she's what is she now with his things but i have to say that yeah. was like there was a lot of really gross parts i liked how they you were on the boy's side as far as they tied her up and stuff they're trying to figure out if this is their mom and then they just start getting 
gradually, at one point, I found myself going, whoa, wait a second. There's something wrong with these boys because why the fuck are they doing that? Like they put that wood thing in her mouth and we're sewing something. And then when they were burning her face with the mat, I'm like, okay, now these boys are disgusting kids. Like they're very, um, you know what I'm trying to say? They're, they're so violent and, oh, they put the cat in the water. I was like, why? They emptied out a fish tank for, for people who didn't want to see it. I'm taking a fish tank and poured um, kerosene, I guess. Right? I thought it was water, but then it all lit uh, yeah. on fire. At yeah, the end, it wasn't. So. It wasn't clear what they put in the the tank, but yeah, it was combustible it at the end. Yeah, which we learned. And they <laughs> took a dead cat and put it in there. Maybe it was bleach. I don't know. And even that, I was like, when they were like, Ma- "Mommy did it," and I'm like, "Well, how do you know that? That cat was really sickly looking, and it was behind the, yeah. you know." But anyway, so they started doing all these things. I was like, okay. These kids now, though, are crossing the line with they're disturbing. Um, but anyways, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, what really affected me the most was that cockroach going into her mouth. That was gross. Yeah. I hated that. And then she just, it just went in there, I guess. And she woke up the next day and lived her life. And I, that really bothered me. And <laughs> <laughs> she just lived her life. <laughs> you that, know what affected she, me? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No. No, I was just, I was making noises of being disgusted that the cockroach was in her mouth. Um, I have weird ones. I feel like I have weird ones that are not like what most people would say, but with, oh my God, I I had a lot of anxiety when they were trying to cut open her, the glue between her lips because they, they super glued her lips together so that she couldn't yell for help because they had some like red cross, like door to door knocker people in the house. So they super glued her mouth shut and tried to like cut it back open. Oh. Major anxiety. I was like, oh my God, they're going to fuck this up. Like I just knew. And they like, they built the tension so fucking well actually because they cut back and forth like eight goddamn times. Like I was like, oh, they're going to fuck it up. No. Oh, they're going to do it. No. Oh my God, they're going to cut her. Li- no. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not going to cut. No. Okay, and then they cut her fucking, and it sprayed, like, out, and I was like, oh, my God, that affected me a lot. I was like, ew, that is so gross and terrible. And then, here's a weird one. It was when she, she, it's, like, right after that scene, and she tries to escape, and she, like, runs, and they booby-trapped the house to try to keep her in the house, and she fucking, like, hits something and trips and smacks her face on the ground. I was like, I gave a gigantic gasp but i was like <gasps> no that when she went Ugh. smack we all went ah and you know what the lip scene i started watching it and i'm like okay maybe i'll do it i had the exact same and then i hid my eyes i didn't even see it squirt oh, but what no, i did watch it i did hear her go ah! and i was like oh god and then i looked and her mouth was all and i just kept saying oh my god all this money she spent on plastic surgery like i know i know i'd be pissed these kids fucking up her brand new face. <laughs> like, Man. Something um, like interesting, gross is that, well, it's gross to me because I don't like bugs, but Suzanne West, who played the mother, um, she lived alone for three months to prepare for the role, often completely swaddled herself in bandages, and she also kept two pet cockroaches. Okay, weird choice. That was like just to say that she did. Like she was, <laughs> she because her character has nothing to do with cockroaches other than the fact that the boys put a cockroach in her mouth. Maybe it was like maybe she was like trying to get used to them. Maybe. Yeah, because I would, ugh, those cockroaches. I was. Ugh, so there was so many cockroaches. That in this movie. cockroach going into her movie was not real, right? That was had to have been. Uh, okay. I was I was looking pretty close, and I was like, yeah, that's definitely some some effects there as okay, it goes good. into her mouth I, th- I think when they put it on her and it crawls up up her chest and around her face I think that was probably real but then they cut back and it's like in her it's crawling into her mouth that looked fake see to I me, don't so. think I could be an actress because I if they wanted to put the cockroach on me dude thinking about it gives me panic attack and I don't have to do it I like would hate it like if yeah. they're gonna give me 30 million dollars but it would be really fucking hard, really hard. 
I, I don't think it'd be as hard. I think you'd probably like, you'd probably work your way up, right? Like you probably wouldn't come in to set that day and be like, <laughs> okay, it's time for the scene now. I'm going to lay down and close my eyes and somebody's going to put a cockroach on me. Like you'd probably like let it I don't even on your hand. See, that's horrible. Like just thinking of the prep for it even. See, I guess I don't, it would be gross, but I guess a cockroach like wouldn't, it doesn't gross me out the way that other things gross me out because a cockroach can't actually hurt you. Like it's gross, but like, it's gross. Yeah. I, I think I could get over it being on me. Like, whereas like a snake or something, snakes freak me out. I cannot deal with that because there's like a potential of it biting you or like, Not you know what I mean? Sna- I don't Yeah. Like I think I could do a snake. See, that doesn't scare Weird. me as much as a cockroach. Okay. That's We're right. opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I'm like a little cock. What are you going to do with that little cockroach mouth? You're not going to bite me. I'm cool. No, it's just going to touch you. It's just gross. Like and they're it, not like- going to put a killer snake on you for filming. Well, yeah, but like what if it bit you still? Like I, I think the thing that I worry about is like that it's going to smell my fear. <laughs> That's the thing about all animals. I think we talked about this with the deer and shit. And I'm like, I don't remember if I left that in our episode, but I, I'm like anything that is an animal – I feel like it can smell my fear. So I'm afraid of being afraid of it. <laughs> so like one time at my grandpa's shop. So my grandpa owns, we're off on a tangent here. Stay with me. My grandpa owned a um, car upholstery shop. That's what he did for a living. He owned it. And he would have like just some like weird characters come on through like all the time. And so at some point when I was like maybe 12 or something, he had somebody come through with a boa constrictor. And they put this, they were like, hold your hands out. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, 12. So I'm like, okay, sure. So I put out my hands and they put this like, I mean, it's like a yellow and white like boa constrictor, some some kind of snake, I don't know. But it starts like slithering up towards my hair. And I just, also like I'm terrified of trying to like throw a thing because like I don't want to hurt it. You know, like I'm, I'm panicked. So I'm yeah. panicked, but I'm panicked that I'm panicked and it can smell my fear. And I'm just like screaming. I'm just like, get it off, get it off me. <laughs> and at the same time this is happening, this guy's like, oh, he likes hair. So that's why he's going for like my neck is to like nuzzle up in my hair. But I'm not like old enough to like keep it cool. I'm freaking out. I'm like, get it off, get it off me, get it off. <laughs> just screaming. Ugh. But my big thing is like being injured. Like I don't want to be, I don't want to get rammed by a deer. <laughs> I don't want to get bit by rammed a snake. by a deer. Okay, so <laughs> I we are in the pole opposite because like I don't want to either, and I do have that thing with the fear thing. Like I'll think of, like if I'm getting nervous, um, I mentally go, okay, you need to come down because you don't want the dog to know you're scared or something yeah. like that. But um, when my daughter was little, my oldest daughter, when she was in um, kindergarten, they had this person come in and do like, look at the different bugs. And there was a stick bug. <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay. <laughs> and I just happened to go, so it must have been um, after school care because I had just gotten there and they were just allowing her to hold the stick bug. I do not want to give her any kind of, um, what is that called? Like a phobia of bugs just because I'm irrationally right. scared of them. So I'm yeah. like, oh. And my daughter's like, oh, I'm going to hold this bug. And they put it and it's a stick bug is walking and then it goes onto her face. I'm sweating. I'm like, okay, we got to go. We got to go and get your stick oh. bug. And I'm trying not to give her like a complex about stick bugs. So they go to take the bug. And you see her, like, her skin go like this a little. Like, their feet are sticky. And it pulls out a little like this. And I was like, oh. Like, I felt like I totally was going to pass out. (laughs) I literally felt like I was going to pass out right there. I got lightheaded and I'm like, never again. But anyway. Okay, so how about we talk about, because for me, there were several parts that I was like, well, was this answered somewhere or was it totally missed? Um, I don't know what did the director or the writer who and everybody that made this film feel like, oh, we don't really need to address that. And so then when I was doing research, there was a lot of people that had the same questions. And so one of the questions was in the very beginning, 
when the boys are playing in the cornfield and then they go into, um, they were in the cornfield and then they go to the lake member and um, the little boy, Elias, is floating on something magical because, I mean, it's probably just a raft, but it looked really yeah. weird because you couldn't see anything. And then he's calling Lucas and you see the bubbles in the water. Um, some people say that that was, we were witnessing his death. Like that that was him. That's what happened to Lucas. Okay. Um, I don't think that's the case. And actually it was me in, in my my teens as well. They were like, no, I think they're, that that's when he died. And I was like, I don't think so. And the only reason is because in the cornfields they're playing and then he starts going, Lucas, Lucas. Then they're in the water. Lucas, Lucas, then someplace else. So it was like he was constantly calling for Lucas that, like, why was he in the cornfields calling for Lucas if Lucas was already alive and well and then they went to the water and he died? I don't know. I just didn't feel right. like that was him dying. Maybe it was reminiscent, though. Maybe it was like a message of that's how he died. I don't know. Do we know well, how Lucas I... died? We don't. Yeah, we do, we don't. And I but I feel like that scene with him on the lake, you see Lucas in the in the background. Like it looks like he's like squatted down. Like I I mean I could have maybe not seen this right, but I thought that you could see him in the far side squatted down at the edge of the lake. And so like I started to at that point, that was very early in the movie, but I started to think like, oh, was there a third brother like that died? Like that was before I was like the juice scene I think where I was like oh no there's two and one died like but I uh, it was weird yeah so I don't know we never we really never got an answer on that did we how the brother died and so I read a lot about that and so there's lots of clues but then nothing is really clear so the mother mentions when the priest brings the boys home right the boys run away so for everybody the the boys think that this is not their mom. She's in a really bad mood. I already discussed reasons why she might have been in a bad mood. But uh, she's also wrapped in bandages and looks so scary. So, yeah. you know, they're freaked out. They don't think it's really her. And so they run away. And they go to the church. And then the priest says, oh, yeah, I'm bringing her to the police and brings them home. Um, and <clears throat> so when the priest is like, will you, will you want to explain yourself to the mom? She says it's just been... Something like it's just been really hard with the separation and the accident. The accident, yeah. Right? Okay, so that's it. Separation, accident. So we assume separation, husband, and then accident. She's also all bandaged up. So you initially might think, oh, she's um, she was in the accident as well. But then later in the movie, in the room, it shows clearly that she was planning plastic surgery because there was that picture on the wall with the lines on her face, like where they were going to do the thing. Plus her body is fine. You know, it's like just her face. So, and they did, she is a talk show host. Right. Of some kind. She's on TV. Yeah. So there might be the vanity level there or needing, you know, to stay young, look young to, you know, remain on TV. Just seems interesting that her son dies, which if you're Tawny, you know, right away, if you're me, you don't. (laughs) So you don't know that right away that her son's gone, but like her son dies, her husband leaves her very possibly because the son died. A lot of families don't make it through a tragedy like that. Um, And then she goes and has plastic surgery. Okay, who watches this other boy? Yeah, You're like totally. What's happening? So anyway, so we have no idea. And so some of the things, and I'll totally let you talk, that people were talking about online was that um, the boy drowned, right? And that was reminiscent of him drowning, or we were actually watching him drown in the beginning. Um, that there might have been some type of an accident that killed the boy, but then that is not accurate because she specifically says to... Elias, it wasn't your fault. So if it was a car accident, it wouldn't have been his fault. So the swimming thing makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah. And then I think plastic surgery is very clear. So I don't know. I'm kind of on, they don't answer any of that. So at the end, what you realize is she is somehow stuck to the floor. Maybe he put super glue all over the floor or something. She can't get off the floor. Um, and he's lighting shit on fire and all of that. And, um, 
she's like, I, you know, I can't see him. We understand that he's dead. She talks about him being dead. Um, and it wasn't his fault. Then the house burns down at the end. Elias is walking through the corn and he sees Lucas and his mom and joins them. So did he burn in the fire too? That's kind of what I got from it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause they don't, he runs out of the room and clearly can get out of the house. Um, but they don't right. really, you don't know. You do see the mom spirit walk out. Did you see that at the end? It was like in the corner. So the house was on fire. There was all the, the, yeah. the fire people, the firemen, sorry. And by the fire truck, you see her figure walk around the fire truck and go into the corn. Oh, shit. Okay. Actually, now that you say that, I did see that, but I did not. Equ- I, di- I just, for whatever reason, like I didn't think that was her. Or something. Oh, I thought it was but I, her. But Maybe. I did see that, and I did think it was weird. Like, I picked up on it enough to be like, that's weird. Why would you walk out and around? Like, that person's leisurely walking around this burning house. Like, I remember kind of being like, but I wasn't, like, super paying attention to it. So Because I think she was, like, I, had long hair and in a nightgown. But, you yeah. know what? I didn't see Lucas at the side of the uh, lake. My you did and my teen oh, said yeah. he was there at the lake and I didn't I didn't remember seeing him at all. But yeah, anyways there's probably there's probably a lot of stuff like that that's like shit in the background that you don't like quite you know, maybe it's one thing, maybe it's another. I don't know. It just feels like one of those movies. It's so vague. There's like a lot of vague stuff. Which is actually something I liked. I liked that mm-hmm. this movie was I liked that there was so little fucking dialogue. I, I just love that. That's something that I love in a movie when they can get across so much information with so little words. Like I was like, that's one thing I think they did so fucking well. Like by the end of the movie, there are some things up in the air, but you get what's fucking going on. The and main you get points it. you get. Yes. Yes. And they, they tell you, they, they don't tell you, they show you. There's not a lot of exposition. There's, it's just like, you know, like when the boys were looking through the, um, photo album and there's like our wedding day and the photo's gone i was like okay they're separated right or or there was maybe the, he was involved in the accident she can't stand to look at him or something but i but as the as the events happened i got the i got the idea like oh they're separated because also i think yeah. she says something about her their dad like in the present tense as if he's like not dead so mm-hmm. like but you know it's stuff like that that you start to just like visually put together you see visually and you're like, oh, in your brain, okay, here's what's happening. So I think they did a pretty good job of that. And I think I think there was some stuff that was meant to be left up to. I mean, in an, I mean, at the end of the day, how he died isn't important. The important part right. was that he was dead and he wasn't really there. Right. Yeah, that's very and true. And that the, the boy probably blames himself, however it happened. And that's why she says it wasn't your fault. You know, but... Yeah. You you kind of take that spirit that to like, hates his mom. Yeah. Totally. I wonder what and, that but, was all about psychologically. It could have been. You know what I kind of thought is like it mm. could have been that the Elias sort of hated her. And so he like compartmentalized that part of himself and put it in the other twin. Ooh, I like that. I'm going with that. You know, that. like <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with that one. I like that. Because it's like, there's prob- there's something that happened. Again, we, it's not, we, we don't know the details. It's not clear. There's a, he died. We don't know how. And maybe the little boy blames himself, but maybe he blames her too, right? Like, oh, it's your fault yeah. that he died. Yeah, and if you think of the element, so she was supposedly a very loving mom, right? Because when she came back and she was angry and frustrated, they were like, oh, this isn't mom. Um, but... I mean, back to what I said earlier, she lost her son, her husband left her, and she goes out and her concern is to go get plastic surgery. Right. You know, like, that seems really extremely narcissistic. It's weird. But here's the other thing that made me be like, oh, for sure it's plastic surgery, is there's like a bunch of vain photos in their house. You know, they keep the showing blurry. us. blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Like shots of what well, I kind of assumed it was her like I just so assumed I. it was her outline like a picture of her and so I'm like okay she's obviously vain you know whether or not 
it does seem like a weird timing to go get plastic surgery after all of this, you know, family tragedy. But that's just what I ended up at the end of the movie. I was like, oh, okay, this plastic surgery. It seems like it doesn't, mm-hmm. it, it's unclear if it had something to do with whatever accident there was, but I kind of got the impression it was plastic surgery. Yeah, because um, uh, someone discussed this online. I actually have, I can talk, I can actually quote it. Because usually we're using Wikipedia or um imdb so that's our that's the usual suspects but for this particular one it's an article by seth hansen um from pop called why goodnight mommy is more complicated than you think so that was like the best article i found that really kind of discussed all these different elements and questions um yeah, she, I mean, we do know that she's very vain as far as herself because um, when she was trying on all the clothes, right, in the, yeah. her room. So if you're really gullible like me, I thought, oh, it's not her and she doesn't fit the clothes or she's trying to see, like, if that's oh. not their mom, then she's trying to fit the part. And remember she went and took a phone call and they turned off the vacuum and she said something like, I'm not going to go along with this anymore. Yeah. Oh, may- oh, she was talking about maybe the boy. The son. Yep. Oh, see, that just clicked for me. Okay. But see, but the- here's the thing. And this is another thing that I really loved about this movie. Like, there are parts that I loved about it. You could watch that movie and look at every single thing that happens through both lenses. Yes. And they both make sense. Like, that was brilliant. Yes. I thought that they did that fantastically. And that was what I was mentioning about the mom going into the forest versus the nightmare. It was so seamless that I didn't catch that it was a nightmare. I just went back because, like I said, that head shaking thing really bothered me. I was like, okay, she can't be their mom, but she is. So I rewound it to watch it again. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You, You can see it as she's excited for her new face. So she's trying on her clothes again. She was obviously in the hospital for a long time. Um, or this isn't the mom. So she's trying on, you know, she's trying to fit the, the piece the you know, the character and, and she's not. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that whole conversation on the phone, right. Where she's like, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. Like, and that's kind of what I read her hostility when she comes back from surgery. Like, I feel like she's just sort of had enough and she wants Mm -hmm. her son to, to not be in denial anymore. She wants him to snap the fuck out of it. Your brother's dead. And so she's frustrated, which, like, you know, we can argue all day long if that's right or wrong, but I could see how you would arrive at that place mentally where you'd be like, because you obviously miss your child, and so, like, you're frustrated. Quit bringing it up. He's dead, you know? Like, I totally got that, like, 1,000%. And actually... It's interesting to me that you say that you watch this movie through the lens of the children. I think every once in a while I had a moment where I was like, yes, this is exactly what children would do. I watched this movie almost all the way through, through the lens of the mom, which is weird because like, I don't have kids. Like, (laughs) so like, it was weird for me to do that, but I, I felt like I was on her side, like most of the time. Hmm. Yeah. You know what? The reason I wasn't is because I didn't think that that boy was dead. Yeah. So if I knew he was a ghost, I immediately would understand that frustration. You know what I mean? Like everything she's going through. But I thought he was alive. So how horrible of a mother to not feed him, just totally act like he doesn't exist. And like, what did he do? Like it bothered me so much. So that makes her a villain because she's treating him this way so badly yeah yeah but if he wasn't if i knew he would have if i would have caught on that he was dead i yeah it would have been a totally different different view different thing yeah yeah different thing um i want to throw a weird scene at you before i forget because i was like what the fuck is happening here at some point they're like venturing out into the forest and they stumble across some sort of like graveyard where they go in and it seems like there's a bunch of human skulls i was like (laughs) what the fuck and like it's never explained and i was like that's one thing that i was like (laughs) okay so here's what i'm wondering 
and I should have looked that up and maybe while I chat, I can. Um, no, I can't. Cause did you immediately see how I couldn't type and talk at once? So like, good night, mommy. Um, like, uh, bones. Skulls. Scene, yeah, skulls. That's where they oh, find the cat. Yes. So I, I wondered if that is something, okay. When they started climbing in, all of us were like, whoa, there's a bunch of dead bodies in that thing. And it, didn't even phase the kids and then they never addressed it again i'm wondering if that is something like known in um that country uh let me see where where that like in um austria right it was an austrian like maybe is this like a catacomb situation like yeah maybe that's something that's that um is known about like a location maybe they just have bodies laying around who knows because we don't know no one cared about the thousands of people dead <laughs> inside of that thing hobbit hole yeah I... yeah i wonder i i feel bad i really should have looked that up i really should have looked that up because i noticed it too i was like whoa the... but it's so fleeting that you forget by the end of the movie you're like you know, it has no bearing on anything, really, except for the fact that they find the cat. And like, but the cat is its own thing later. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was the main focus of that whole, like, tomb full of dead people was that the cat, the kids didn't even care. So that's what made me think it was something that was known, like, in yeah. that region, maybe. Um, hmm. but yeah, that, that was a good one to bring up. Some, some interesting tidbit. So the actors were not given the script. Okay. Um, and the movie was filmed chronologically. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I already told you about <laughs> Suzanne West. Uh, 240 twins were auditioned for the main role. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. So I do That's have to say, I thought the acting was great. I thought Me those too. boys were great. The mom, she was really believable. I didn't... I didn't think she was over the top. Like, I really enjoyed the acting, especially when you have kids that act so well, like so believable. It's not faked. It was, I was, I was in the house with them. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And I, I, I do agree that that was a large part of it. And even like with the language barrier, right? Cause we're reading subtitles, like, mm-hmm. but it still was fucking good. Like I was like, they did a great job. And again, I just, there's something about like so little dialogue that I love. I just love the tiny, teeniest bit of dialogue to get across your message. I fucking, ugh, it's one of my favorite things. Have you seen Drive? Yes. Yes, I have. <sighs> Drive is one of my favorite movies of all time. I watched it actually like last weekend and I, I had a Ryan Gosling moment. I, I watched Drive. Maybe it was two weekends ago. I don't know, but I was like having a moment. Like I was just like, okay, what else can I watch with Ryan Gosling? (laughs) The only other thing for free right now, if you have all those, is uh, The Notebook, which I watched again, and it was very good. Oh, I love that movie. Me too. My thing, I'm going to admit it. I'm going to admit it. Mine is um, Charlie Hunnam. Mm, So mm, mm -hmm, I watched mm -hmm. him in Green Street Hooligans. It took me a minute to remember who that is. Yeah. Loved that movie and loved him. And yeah, then he's great. Sons of Anarchy. Uh, yeah. Um, so my, like one of my favorite things about Drive is that there's very little dialogue. So little dialogue and you are so sold on those characters, especially the driver and the main character, Ryan Gosling. You're like, you, you, you're just, you, I mean, I don't know, maybe this is just me, but you fall in love with him as a character immediately and he like there's just so much that is like you know given and taken in that movie without dialogue and so that's like one of my favorite things and I just feel like they did a really good job of that in this movie I love I I agree I'm on the same page with you on that I love when there's not dialogue and there's a bunch of a or there's limited dialogue and I can visually understand what's going on without them having to tell me I do I love that I also love fucking wicked good dialogue so we watched me too sorry you're gonna hate me for this because i've been bombarding tawny with ratchet 
I've been <laughs> bombarding her because I love this character. I loved One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I think this is an amazing, um, strong female villain to take okay. on a further journey. That's why I'm so I mean, excited. I like that. I'm so excited about that because in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, she was very much obviously a... Um, not obviously, but she was very much a presence and, and a villain sort of presence. But she wasn't like the main part of the movie. There's lots of other stuff that happened. So I think that's really cool that they're extracting her and giving her her own story. And I'm so excited about that. Um, so anyways, we were watching. Ah! So I made my whole family come in. I'm like sweating with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was on Instagram and seeing all of our horror community friends posting like stuff about it. And I'm like, oh my God, we're recording. I'm going to watch it after. So anyway, deep breath. So I made everybody in my family watch the trailer and there's this money scene and I'm terrible at quotes, but there's this money scene and I'm like, guys, just watch, just watch. And they're like, what? My mom is obsessed. But, um, she is, she's a nurse in a mental institution, right? And she's in the, like the community area, like the lunch room with all the nurses. And there's another nurse eating a peach. She looks into her bag. So you realize that her peach is mis missing and they have this dialogue back and forth. Like, Hey, that's my peach. Her name's not on it. Who would do that? Who would put a name on a peach? So they're fighting about this peach, right? And then the other nurse walks up to her and was kind of just like, blah, 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 da, 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 da. And like, what are you going to do about it? And Nurse Ratchet's just standing there. And she's like, are you deaf? She's like, no, I'm just thinking of all the, all the things, all the ways I could do something about it or something like that. Like, it's just like, <laughs> okay. I fucked it up, I'm sure. But like, no, I'm just thinking of all the things I'm going to, all the ways I'm going to do something about it. And it's just like I get cold chills, like, fuck, yes, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> and everybody, because I built it up, like, I have a lot of passion. And I'm like, family, watch this. And so they're all, like, <laughs> listening. So as soon as she said it, I'm just thinking of all the, uh, I'm just thinking of all the ways I'm going to do something about it. Everyone went, oh, shit. Like, I'm really, I'm a big hyper. <laughs> like, I can really get people rallied. <laughs> But apparently <laughs> your whole family yeah. like the whole family out. by the end of this the trailer which i made them watch both trailers because one's more gory than the other um everyone everyone including my husband was like oh shit we have to watch this oh my god you <laughs> yeah. sold them you sold them i sold it. them hardcore they should definitely have me on like it's just this random person that's psyching people up for the show <laughs> Dude, if, if there's anything you're good at, Felicia, I know for sure <laughs> it is being a hype woman for like, I know that because I've experienced it. Like you are the best hype woman ever. Oh, People should it. hire you for that. So I love hyping things I love. So yeah. So anyway, that was, uh, oh, that the whole point of that was the good dialogue. When people say those lines and it's not like a ton of dialogue, it's the, the lines that you go. Mm -hmm. yes that was awesome yes. they stick with you they give you like goosebumps on on your all over your body i love that me too i love that so so i love it both i love really good place lines that give you the cold chills and i love where visually i know what's happening without a lot of dialogue i took some notes again because now i'm just gonna do this forever after i, really I did like it for it. antichrist the first one i took is that like in the very beginning, very small thing, but they're like walking around the cornfields and they're like coming home when they're walking around in that mushy earth. Oh, that made me so uncomfortable, dude. I was eating at the same time that I was watching that and it made me nauseous. I had to like stop looking at it. Like I don't really have that weak of a stomach, but I was like, that is fucking gross. That's like, I don't know why, but it really grossed me out. So let's talk about that for a half a second because I had okay. the same reaction. Like, I don't like the word spore, and I don't like, like, I don't even know what it is. Like, my daughter told me it's a phobia of, like, pores or... Oh, yeah. Like, I don't like... I don't know what the word is, but I'm I don't exactly like, you. Yeah, I don't like warts. The word spore reminds me of those dots. I hate it. And I got the same feeling when I saw the earth. Like, that weird... So, they were walking on 
on the ground, but it like squished. Like it was really weird, but I got the same vibe. Like it was gross. It was so nasty. Okay. I'm glad that you're like that for me because I'm like that too. Like any, I, I forget what it's called, but there's an actual word and it's like several holes close together. So like, what's the fucking, there's like a flower. You're right. Because I just Googled it on my phone and I wrote phobia of, and it said holes and it's called <laughs> tripophobia. Yeah. Um, and this flower is gross. Yeah, so that was gross. I'm glad that you <gasps> felt the same way. Why did I Google this? This girl has that Don't. shit all over her hand. And I saw no. a picture. I'm sure that's Just tell me it's makeup. It's got to be Photoshopped, yeah. right? Because it was all over her no, hand. The, okay. People take pictures of that flower that I'm talking about. There's like pods. There's like pods yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. and, and they just the, Photoshop that, that onto too. skin. Oh, okay, that's what that was. Yeah, it's not, Thank it's not you, real. Thank you, Tawny. You're welcome. I'll be here for all of your anxiety needs because I, as a person with anxiety, can talk you off the anxiety ledge. I will need you because I saw that <laughs> and that was just my night was not going to go well. So, OK, good. That's Photoshop. OK. Yeah, fake, 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 fake. Um, I also wrote down hashtag mom life <laughs> because I was like, <laughs> like we had talked about very early. Like I was like, OK, I'm watching this movie through the lens of this mother. And I'm also pissed. I'm like frustrated. She's trying to have a good night's sleep and these little boys are being crazy and whatever. So like when she, there's like this scene where she goes into their room and they are like clearly, well, the one is clearly up to no good. He's like trying to hide something. She's like, what are you hiding? What are you standing in front of? You know, she's like trying to find it. And she gets so pissed. She fucking smothers his ass. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? She like lays down on top of him in his own bed. I was like, straight up, this is weird, but I would do this if I had kids. I'd get so pissed I would smother a child. No. Oh no, not smother. Not, not to kill, but I but I feel like I would be like, So I, I think, would do that. I'd put I, my body on that. I'd be like, oh, you think you're so fucking smart? Watch me fucking overpower you with my body that's three times the size of your fucking body. Like I totally would do that, dude. That's so why I don't I, have kids. I feel like I'm going to clarify for you, though. Because <laughs> when I think of smother, I think of pillow over the face. Yeah, so I know. That's So in I this scene, she was more like uh, choke holding. Like, it was more like a wrestling. She was laying on him and she was, like, yeah. on him. So I totally know what you're talking about because when I saw her do that, I saw a lot of things about how she was semi-abusive. I didn't, I mean, what did she do that was really abusive? I only saw her, and okay, this is why I'm pausing. I saw her as abusive because I thought that that boy was alive and she was ignoring him. Right, exactly. I thought that that was super mentally abusive. What a horrible woman. But if we knew, let's say I was like Tawny and super like sharp as a nail or as a tack or whatever, super sharp. And... Like, I love that you were on, I, when I saw the end, I thought, fuck, I bet Tawny figured this shit out. And I didn't. I'm like on the other end. I feel like I am like the movie creator's dream. Cause whatever you feed me, I'm, I, I'm buying <laughs> oh, <yeah>. it. <laughs> I'm buying it. But anyways, she was just really angry and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, she specifically said, guys, don't bring anything into the house. Sorry, I had ice in my mouth. So they went to like these catacombs and brought back a fucking cat. And the cat was nasty. Sickly. Okay. Not, it was sickly. It was greasy. It was mangy. It was ill. Okay. And they bring that back in the house. Like I kept thinking. And also when the boys were doing all that shit to her, I was like, these boys are disturbed. And then I thought, well, shoot. Is that how boys are? I don't know, because I have just given birth to a lot of goddesses. <laughs> no, right. no boys. So I don't know, like, is that how boys are? Because it seemed like extra, I don't know, it seemed I extra. I don't know. Some, <laughs> something that I think is an interesting juxtaposition in this movie is the fact that, because I kept thinking about this all the way through, is like, I okay, because here's the thing. 
you need to know also that I knew what the plot of this movie was before we even watched it. Like way before we watched it. I knew what was going to happen. I knew that it was like there were some twin kids who thought their mom wasn't their mom and they tortured her. Which also I think took a lot of the bite out of me watching this movie. And so to be fair, that was my, that was just my personal experience. But it's interesting that they treat the animals with more respect than they do their mom. Like, cause I kept thinking like, okay, are we watching some like serial killer vibe shit, right? Where they're like torturing these animals and killing them? No, not at all. These boys treat these animals, even cockroaches, which most people would kill with a lot of respect. They save them, they keep them, they feed them, you know, presumably by the fact that they're all still alive. There's only that one bug though. Remember when he was doing the magnifying glass on the bug, which all oh, boys yeah. do. I I don't know, but I, I think all boys and Tawny do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a serial killer. Not a but, serial oh, killer. But oh no, you know what I used to do? I used to put salt on snails. Not like regularly, not like serial killer level, but I tried it. I tried it too. I did it like once. And then I felt really fucking bad and I never did it again. But I would kill ants with a mm. magnifying glass. There's just something about ants that they're like so tiny that you just, I think you don't I just don't this. think I had a magnifying glass is all. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that, that, you know what? I was raised by my grandparents, okay? I was like <laughs> living up with some people that couldn't see. <laughs> I had a lot of magnifying glasses at my uh, disposal. So, but yeah. But it was interesting to watch because I kept thinking like, oh no. <laughs> I kept thinking, sorry. Go ahead. But I kept thinking, oh no, we're gonna watch them kill this animal, right? Like I kept thinking, like, oh no, they're gonna fucking torture and kill these cockroaches. Oh no, they're gonna torture and kill this cat. No, they did not. They cared a lot for the animals, so it was just an interesting juxtaposition that they cared so much for the animals, but not for the mother. Can I ask you before you go to the rest of your notes? What do you think about? Why couldn't the mom give them the answers to prove that she was their mom? Here's my theory. Because she, he asked her, the one thing that I remember the kid asking her that is of any, like, import is, he's like, what is Lucas's favorite song? Yeah. And she gets that wrong. That's like the one moment in the movie that I think is is ultra iffy. Like everything in the movie you can view from both sides, but the one, like maybe she wasn't super close to that son or maybe that son. She recorded that song, but she recorded that song for them while she was in the hospital. Remember when they were in the bed together and he said, play the song again. And she goes, hey, guys, I can't wait to come home. It was like a recording. She goes, I can't wait to come home. And she sang the song. That was the song. Yeah, but how is she supposed to know that her son's imaginary brother's favorite song is that song? Like, that's why I was like, I'm totally on board with this. because. But then why didn't she sing that? Why did she sing that song? Now... I totally get what you're saying, though, because I told my kids, I don't know what your favorite song would be. I know. Right. I know, like, my oldest daughter, I sang Sweet Child of Mine to her. And my second daughter, I sang Angel Baby to her. But I don't know if they would view that as their favorite song. Right. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that's true. But why didn't she know who she was? Remember when they had mother, mama, on her head when they were playing that game? Yeah, but, okay, but again, I'm viewing it from the lens of, like, she, like, one of these boys is not there. And if you were a person, you would never think that they put you on that card. That she is like, a semi semi-famous talk show host with two children in Austria. You wouldn't. So if they said you are a horror podcaster with one kid, you'd have to have a kid to play the game with one kid. Um, semi-famous cause I dream big. You wouldn't <laughs> in Idaho. 
Right. It's okay. People know you're in Idaho. Okay. <laughs> yes. Right? You wouldn't go, me? Like. I don't think so. I think really? it's just like, yeah, I think it's one of those things that you just like assume okay. nobody's going to put me on this card. It's somebody else. Like it just, mm. it's, it's almost like a, you know what I mean? Like it's like a weird thought process to think like, oh, you're going to put my, me and put it on my forehead. Yeah, I, I guess so, that's like, true. The whole time I'm watching that scene, I'm like, yeah, I get that she would be confused because it's like this weird, I don't know what to call it, but it's just, you would never think that somebody would put yourself. And so I think that would, that would be my case too. If I were ever playing that game and somebody wrote Tawny and put it on my forehead and they'd be like, (laughs) I went to art school. Yeah. I love horror movies. Yeah. Like I'd be like, I'd guess other people. Because it wouldn't even cross my mind. Who would you guess that went to art school, loves horror movies, has a horror movie podcast? Who? Okay, my friend Paige. She doesn't have a horror movie podcast, but she does have a movie podcast. Right? Like, okay, who's the second person pe- you'd guess? <laughs> I Shout would out guess... to Paige. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know intimate details okay, about other no, people. Okay, no, but that's a good point. Because I thought that she would guess it, but you... Um, you wouldn't, and you're a real human, so. Yeah, but we as the audience, we know that they write mama and they put it on her head and they're like trying to get her to guess herself. But as an adult person playing a game, you would never consider, I think, I don't think you would think somebody would put you. So you'd be thinking of everybody that you could possibly think of beside yourself. And again, I think that's part of the brilliance Let's just say though. I now will think of me the very first one whenever I play this game. Go to the next Let's one. Let's bring it back to hashtag mom life. This is my, I have two other points in this uh, note. Two, when she locks them in their room. I mean, again, I think you're kind of like, okay, that's maybe a little bit crazy. Like that's a little bit abusive, but I could see myself doing that. Like, if I was, like, pushed to the brink of, like, frustration about my children who would, like, not listen to me and kept leaving the house and bringing home, like, sickly animals, I think I might lock them in their room. Like, I was kind of, like, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, is that abusive? They had, like, a big-ass room, first of all. They had food in there. Their room was huge. They had a ton of stuff in there. They had food in there. They had drinks in there. They had a fucking balcony. Like, yeah. it's not like she locked them in the closet or something. It was like a really nice big room. They were running amok. She was like, enough. You're staying in your room. Like, I don't. They're I mean, old I... enough also not to like hurt themselves being in their room. So that was the other part of my thought process is like, yeah, I'd do that. <laughs> I'd be like, like, really? Like what? That's abusive. I mean, I don't know. I... I don't know. I'm giving some like general, I'm giving some generous yeah. room. Like maybe other people would view that as, as <laughs> if I had kids, I'm sure I wouldn't do that on the regular. Okay. I'm sure well, that would you not can't be day by day. Because the locks are from the inside. So oh, can't yeah. even lock your kid in the room anymore. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you considered that to be abusive, like, here's why maybe it's not, right? Like, they're old enough to not hurt themselves. They've got a big room. They've got stuff to entertain themselves. Like, I could, ju- I just could see myself doing it. And then the last one, and I think the funniest one, is when they come in to wake her up. Do you remember this? They knock on the door. She doesn't answer. But they come in. I loved this scene, by the way. He tries to, like, kind of wake her up. Doesn't even touch her. I'm doing this. Uh, with my hand but he doesn't touch her he's just like mom wake up she doesn't wake up and he kind of just decides to not he's like okay fuck it i'll leave her alone he leaves Mm. the room closes the door and she opens her eyes (laughs) and i was like (laughs) i was like oh my that that, for one of the only times in this movie i was like ultra creeped out like i was like ew what is oh no oh no she's not their mom but then she was like pulled something up from underneath the covers and kept eating it (laughs) and I was like yeah hashtag mom life like I would totally pretend to be asleep I would totally pretend to be asleep and be like bye (laughs) let me eat my fucking chocolate in peace (laughs) 
You are right. And um, I love that. It was super creepy. And then when she was crunching, I thought, I believe that was after the um, cockroach scene. No, it was before. No way. I think it was before. Because we all immediately thought she was crunching a cockroach. All of us. Well, well, we see cockroaches like eight thousand mm. times before that moment, so I don't think that was like out of the question. But so we I don't like, think she was eating a cockroach. Well, no, she wasn't. She was eating that cookie. But when she first started crunching, because <laughs> she opened her eyes, which was creepy. Then she went crunch, 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 crunch. Right? Yeah, she and was that was like, weird. And it was like because she doesn't have anything, right? You don't see anything. And we were like, oh my god, is she eating a cockroach? And then she. Took out, I think they call them biscuits in Europe. It was like a cookie, a biscuit. Yeah. And she started eating it. 100%. First of all, I have pretended I was asleep. Because I'm a very light sleeper. <laughs> I am uncomfortably light sleeper. Like, when those boys were around her, if I was their mother, there was no way. If they entered my room, I would know. If they were yeah. under my bed and came out and they were shining a light in my face. No, no, yes. no. I would know it all. I'm a horribly light sleeper. And so um, I pretend I'm asleep because if they know that I'm fully awake, <laughs> then they'll like there's more engagement. If I pretend I'm in sleep, then people will leave and then I have a chance of falling <laughs> yes. back to sleep, right? But if people start engaging with me and my brain starts and everything starts waking up, then there's no chance I'm going to fall back to sleep. So I've done that. Yeah, I've snuck yep. food too because sometimes I just want to eat something really quick and I don't want to cook everything. Like Because yes. when you have kids, it's not like I'm talking about, I don't want to cook them dinner. No, 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 no. They eat all day long all day long so if they have eaten breakfast and lunch and i just want to go in and i just want to eat something really quick it's oh mom can i have this and that and this and that so i have snuck food <laughs> and eaten it in private i oh can i say mention something how enraged i would be if those fucking red cross or if it was anybody collectors first of all came into the house they knocked on the door no one answered so they came into the house because it was unlocked yeah. i They're was just... also like whoa this, this is a b and e right now you are breaking and entering yeah. like, then they start going just, like, upstairs what if i was naked showering you're just gonna come up hey we're collecting money for the red cross are you kidding me and then the boys come in hey boys i'm gonna sit with you guess what you're going to jail you are going to jail because you put my children in danger. You were a stranger. You broke into my house and you're holding my children captive. You are going down. Like in weird. Europe, if someone lives in Europe and this is totally normal for like people coming, collecting money and shit to just walk into your house and like chill with your kids, please Let tell us, us. Because I, even if I was a mom that was out shopping and I got home and these people were in my house, I would call the police. I I'd would be pissed. I would be livid. I would have them fired, first of all. I would be so fucking pissed. They're just collecting money, and they're, like, in the house holding my children hostage. Oh, my God, they would go down. Don't ever yeah. come to my house, because I will fuck you up. Well, not like <laughs> it in general, like, if you're coming to say hi. But if you're in that situation, you're done. Yeah. Stranger. <laughs> no, I also thought that was very weird. They walked right in. No problem. And then started walking around the house, and I was like, never would this actually happen? But maybe it is different in other countries and places, but yeah, it yeah, was- Because what if you were showering? What if you took a nap and you just happened to forget to lock the front door? Yeah. And these people are wandering around your house looking for you? No, it's not happening. Is that a thing? I don't know, I don't think so, uh, but- I wanna know guys if that's a thing in yeah, other tell countries. Us. I would love to know. Um, and the last thing I, that I wrote down, which I thought was funny, I have never in my life seen more slapping in a movie <laughs> than was in this movie. <laughs> Just in that one scene with the two boys. Were they... Slapping each other. I love that you said that, though. Were they, do you get the feeling they were just trying to, like, toughen each other up? Or, like, why would they uh, do Not that? necessarily. I just, I mean, I, Do like, boys I do this. that? I want to know. I did all... this. She As a teenager, Tony, you I've apparently done everything. You well, no, your... but 
<laughs> no, but we cl- we played what's called bodies, where you just like punch the shit out of each other. Like my friend Cassie would punch the shit out of people and like want people to punch her back. Like, and I think I played it a couple times, but like, listen, I'm kind of a wuss. Like, I'm like, please don't hurt me, please. Like, I think I did it a couple times, and then I was done. But like, I think just this is just like a teenager kid thing to do, and like a, a dominance thing. Get my stronger than you. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think. When I, back when I was a teenager, I had a lot of issues that we won't get into. Another podcast, another day. <laughs> but <laughs> I, um, I think I, I really, uh, I acted a lot like I would just beat the shit out of you if you yeah. messed with me. And the reason is because my mom told me um, that the majority of people are all talk. I had a calculator that had like like gems as the buttons. And in the back of it, I had a picture of my boyfriend. I was in high school. And a girl stole it. And she was taller. She was a basketball player. So she was bigger than me, taller than me. I was tiny. She stole it from my backpack. And the reason I'm saying that she was bigger than me and taller than me is because Um, Everyone was telling me they saw it because it had a picture of my boyfriend in the background. So I was super nervous, right? And my mom told me the majority of people are all talk. So if you stand up to them, they will believe it. So I remember I walked up to her and I was so scared. And I looked up at her. She was taller than me. And I was like, give me my fucking calculator. (laughs) And she went, what? What? And I remember my heart was beating. I'm like, I know you have my calculator, bitch, because my boyfriend's picture <laughs> is in the back. Give it to me. And she gave it to me. That <laughs> changed my life. It changed my life, but in a bad way, because I was the person that was just like, if you piss me off, I would. And, but by the way, I grew up in yeah. a place where there was like, there was a lot of violence and, and I, I've known some people that were killed in drive-by shootings and things like that. But I was like in, <laughs> I I was totally in people's faces, but in the, like if somebody, okay, then somebody said to me, you better watch out. I had a friend tell me, you better watch out because you're going to meet someone crazier than you. So like yeah. someone who really is crazy, right? And that would beat me up. So um, I think I did do that but no one like the whole hitting thing I think in my mind this is why I'm telling you all of this in my mind if somebody would have hit me like to be like are you tough like I I would have responded in a way like I don't think I yeah portrayed that that you could even do that to me um I don't know does that make any kind of sense it it does it does and the thing that I'm talking about is like a totally consensual deal like it's like okay, I'm, like, hanging out with my friend, and we're, like, let's fucking punch each other. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, like, a different situation, because you're just, like, oh, like, we're trying to be, like, we're trying, like, I just think there's, like, a thing about being, like, a teenager, and you're, like, testing the boundaries about everything, and part of that is your physical boundary. You're, like, how much can I take? You know, like, I I don't know. It doesn't make any actual logical sense as I'm saying it out loud. It's, like, how tough are you? It's important to be tough, yeah. you know, when you're young, for sure. Um, did you have okay. any tidbits? So I love that. I love that you you said all that because I really do like that I saw it in a different way and you saw it in a way that totally aligned with what they were going with. And so that's really cool. I like seeing that different point of view. Um, no, there was no other, there was no other tidbits, just that this movie, like the main, um, kind of theme some people think is all about trust you know and but there wasn't there wasn't a lot other I'm trying to think hold on I think that was it I think I asked you everything that I was kind of confused about did this happen or didn't it and uh what your take was on it and I like that you brought up those things because those are all things that stuck out to me as well yeah um so what what I'm struggling so much with the rating on this movie. Do you know what you give it? I am too because at first last night I was like, oh, I'm going to give it a four. And then I was like, oh, what should I? 
as we're talking, I'm going back and forth. I mean, because I, I enjoyed the movie. I en- I did enjoy it for me personally because I I didn't I didn't get it. I didn't get that the boy was dead. So I enjoyed that suspense of it. And then I think back at other movies. What other movies that I rated a four. And so I'm thinking. I know I rated that. What What do you? What do, okay. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna base it off this. Look, I'm going rogue right now. I'm oh, she's to... going rogue. Oh, geez. I have to give it a four out of five, and the reason is because I gave you should have left a four out of five. Okay. And I, I thought. Wait, no. Wait, no, no, no. I take that back. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh no, no, no! I gave Green Room a four out of five, so I give this a three and a half. Three and a half. Final okay. score. Three and a half. Okay. I'm struggling. I'm somewhere between a three and a three and a half because like, I just feel like they did a lot of things well and I liked that, which is what would push me towards three and a half. But like, I was really fucking bored actually through like most of this movie. And I think most of it is just that I knew what was happening. I knew, you know what I mean? Like I knew Mm -hmm. the plot. I knew the boy was dead. So like, I wasn't shocked by any of it. And then I just kept being like, God, you better give me an explosive ending. And there was like parts. It wasn't explosive. Like, no, there was like gory parts, but it wasn't like, I don't know. I'm going to say a three out of five. Like, is it worth a watch? Like, yes. I think other people would enjoy it. If you didn't know those things that I, I think this is one of those movies that's like best to go in with like no information because they build the tension quite well. Like it is very tense. It's a very anxiety inducing movie. But I just didn't, ex- I, I, again, I think I put it on a pedestal. I've heard about it for too long. I read really great reviews. I was like super stoked about it and it just didn't meet that expectation. So I'm going to give it a three. I think that's really good because I think that matches because I gave it a three and a half because I didn't know what was going on. And for you to give it a three, because you, because if I knew what was going on, like right from the beginning, if it was clear to me, um, I totally get that. That is awesome. Shutter Space is an awesome blog. They recommended this. They had a blog post. Um, she had a blog post on like the underrated horror movies. And so we chose from that blog post. So thank you, Shutter Space, so much for recommending this movie. Uh, three out of five and a four out of five is awesome. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Are you it was going such four? An experience. Oh, a three and a half. Or Sorry. Three and a half. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, don't be rounding up on me. <laughs> no, 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 sorry, so sorry. A th- see, I had four in my mind for so long. Um, but anyways, three and a three and a half out of five, that's a really good score. We um, thoroughly, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. That was that was great. Yes, shout out to our friend Alexis at Shutter Space. Definitely check out that uh, blog. We're going to put it in mm-hmm. the show notes so you can uh, click straight to that blog. She's got some other really great posts. Specifically, there's one about women in horror or women of horror, I think is the title, which of course we love because we're women who love horror. So definitely check that out. Yes. Yes. We love what she's doing and we're glad that we're connected with her. So very cool. Yes. What? So speaking of people we love being connected to next week, what are we watching? So next week is another thing that we got from other people is it, it was a recommendation um, you know, this one, Good Night Mommy, we went to the blog post and picked one out of that list, but this one was a, a submitted request from our friend on Instagram, um, Terrified State, and the movie is called Host, which is on, is it Shudder? It's Shudder, right? Host is on Shudder. I just signed up yes. for a subscription. Me too. I was like, okay, what the fuck are we doing, Felicia? <laughs> like, what? We need to be on Shudder. Like, what? kind of fucking game are we playing so we <laughs> signed up for shutter like a yep. few weeks ago um so we're gonna watch host which is seemingly all revolved around uh e meetings k zoom meetings things like that so i'm really pumped about that and we'll see how it goes we, we're the watching movie? two in a row the movie's about yeah zoom meetings well it's like that's the the really? 
Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. So, do you see? Like, I literally don't even watch anything about the movies we're going to watch if I haven't seen it. I thought of okay. Host. I thought of Bugs. Or, like, yeah. a, that's what I thought of. So that's interesting. That's even more exciting. Mm. I love when people give us recommendations. So if you have ideas mm-hmm. of movies that we haven't looked at before, like, send them through. Send them to us. Like, we like that. So, yeah, and we I obviously agree. have our Halloween voting situation going on. So go vote for those or submit ones. Yeah. Please do. And uh, please join our Facebook group. We love logging in there and engaging with the people in the Facebook group. And links to all of this madness is inside of our bio. So. Yes, like Instagram is kind of like our hub. Like go to Instagram and mm-hmm. then you can find like all of our things. But we're like everywhere. We're on like Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can find our website, two chicks and horrorflick.com. You can email us at two chicks and horrorflick at gmail.com. Like we have like we're just everywhere. And uh, now we're on Twitter apparently, which Felicia did. And I'm like, okay, I don't even so know yeah. anything about Twitter. We're on Twitter and you know our lame our our lame. Our name is way too damn long for Twitter. So we are two chicks HF. Okay. That's our Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Two Chicks HF, and guess what we're on now? Today is the first day, Pinterest, baby. And that's Two <laughs> Chicks and a Horror Flick. We're on Pinterest. I was I was balls to the wall on Pinterest today, filling that up. <laughs> Ooh, fun. Balls yeah. to the wall. So we're legit um, everywhere. I mean, not Tumblr. I don't, I'm I'm not sure I'm not very you know learned what? in Tumblr. Is Tumblr so. a thing anymore? I don't even think so. I think so. Some, uh, okay. I think we can, I think we can let that one go. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Thank God. <laughs> um, and then I also want to say, because we never say this, but if you like our podcast, please give us a like rating or like, you know, give us a little, I don't even know, a testimonial, like write us a review, <laughs> whatever that is on Apple podcasts. Subscribe and give us a review. Like, I never say that either. And legit, I just told you at the beginning, my little one, she is six, came in and was like, two chicks and a little chick, subscribe if you like us and give us two thumbs up. She like knew the whole thing. And I'm like, oh shit, girl, I never say that. I know. I was also like, shit, we never tell people to subscribe or review. If you feel so inclined, we would love a review. We obviously would love if you subscribe um, in the YouTube universe. It, it, because that's what she watches YouTube. It's two thumbs ups and hit the subscribe button. That's where Mm -hmm. she gets that all from because that's what she does. Subscribe and like a notification bell, I think also to know. Oh, that there's our... also a notification if you want us to know. Yeah, I could call her in and she would be able to close this. <laughs> do out the for thing. Us. Yeah, she would be okay, able to good do enough. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, being with us and sharing, you know, this conversation with us this evening. Yes. Join us on all of our things and. We really hope that you vote in our polls and also have a good night and have no nightmares.